May I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Some words from the Gospel according to John, chapter 13, the 34th verse. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. Love one another as Christ loved us. Do any of us really do that? Love other people as Christ loved us? You know, we don't always live up to this, and yet we know we should. Jesus taught us to. We claim to be his followers. The gesture is simple, but it is still so hard at times to love others as Christ loved us. What makes loving others so hard sometimes? What makes it so difficult? As one of the children said this morning, they don't have good personalities. <laughs> and sometimes people do things to upset us. I couldn't agree more. It's hard loving those who love us sometimes, eh? Imagine those who make it hard and difficult to love. And yet this is Christ's challenge for us in the reading today from the gospel, that we love one another as he loves us. You know, we find it hard to do that, not because we are bad-willed people, although some people are, but most of us are not. But rather, it is because we often try to love others in our own strength. And the reality is, we need God's strength to love that way. Even Jesus did. Because when he found it difficult to love those who were crucifying him, he called upon that strength and he said, Father, forgive them. In other words, I can't do it right now. I need your help. You and I, if we're going to love the way Christ loved us, we need God's help. So until we experience that larger love flowing to and through us, we won't be able to love as Christ loved us. That's the point Jesus makes in our text today. Our text comes from a conversation Jesus had with his disciples at the Last Supper, the night before his crucifixion. And even though we are in the season of Easter, the text takes us back to Monday, Thursday. There we are reminded that Jesus washed the disciples' feet. Judas had gone out to betray him, and eventually Peter would go on to deny him. Yet, He still went to the cross on their behalf. He loved them. By highlighting this gospel in the Easter season, we are being reminded that as a people of the resurrection, as an Easter people, one of our primary tasks in this world is to share God's love to others. You know, Jesus is very intentional in this passage about repeating the word love over and over. His message is clear. Discipleship is about love. Of course we know this, because we are told that the two greatest commandments is this, that we love the Lord our God with all our heart and soul and mind and strength, and that we love our neighbor as ourselves. So we ask ourselves, what's new about this commandment that Jesus is saying? What's new? What's new, he says, love others as I have loved you. He qualifies that love. He shows us what that love is supposed to be like. Jesus gives us a new definition on how to love. He provides for us a model of what love should look like. It is the kind of love he had for his disciples. I wonder, as I ask the congregation this morning, when you think about it, what does the love of Christ look like? How has Jesus loved us? Don't all answer at once. (laughs) Go right ahead, Beth. Family. Family. He's given you family. What else does that love look like? Unconditional. Unconditional. Anything else? But you're absolutely right. Yes. Overabundance. There's plenty of it. God knows 
He has a lot of love to be patient with some of us. Right? It's sacrificial. In other words, this love is a commitment. It is an action. See, unfortunately, our culture is filled with a fairy tale understanding of love. The love Jesus speaks of, however, is not some sentimental greeting card mush, some fairy tale romance. It is short on that and long on action, short on feeling, long on action. Paul describes this love of Christ to us when he says, Love is patient, it is kind, it is long suffering, it is hopeful, it keeps no wrong. Etc. Etc. Love is not a feeling, it is a commitment. Ask any husband and wife, ask any couple. Because there are some times you really don't want to do some things in marriage, right? But you do it <laughs> because you love another person. You do it out of commitment. It's not about feeling good all the time, but it is an action. Because you know it will serve the best interests of the other as well as the marriage. Now, I'm not saying you should not be happy. Don't be like the fellow who told me, he said, Mario, my wife and I were happy for 20 years. And then we met each other. You'll get it. <laughs> no. Love is not about a feeling. It is a commitment. So what kept Christ on the cross were not the nails, in fact. It was love. Even though your feelings tell you otherwise, love is a commitment. Jesus didn't want to be on the cross. Remember in the Garden of Gethsemane, he said, Father, take this cup from me. And on the cross, he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And yet, he stayed there out of love. And in the end, he said, Tetelestai. It is finished. That's commitment. That's love. We see in his love compassion, sacrifice, and unconditional circumstances. Whosoever believeth in him will not perish. He so loved the world that he died on the cross that we might have everlasting life. We saw this love demonstrated in his relationship with Peter two weeks ago when he recalled how Peter denied him but yet he still greeted him and forgave him. He said to Peter, do you love me? Peter said, yes Lord, I love you. He said, feed my lamb. Even though Peter tried to jump out of the boat and get away from Christ, Christ still pursued him. Christ loved him. This love does not give up. This love is unconditional. And that's the kind of love Jesus asks of us today. That we go and share that kind of love. Now, I'm not one for fundamentalism, but I think the movement WWJD is most applicable in this regard. See, any time we find ourselves struggling to love others as we should, we should ask that question. WWJD, what would Jesus do? Because that's what he's saying, love others as I've loved you. Can you imagine how different the world would be if he just obeyed that commandment? It would be the most political and social upheaval imaginable. The world would be radically different if human beings really loved others as Christ loved us. See, every day we must make this our most simple rule of thumb. What would Jesus do? That's our obligation to others. Not to sit there complaining that you find it hard to love because others aren't loving you. I mean, Jesus had many occasions when he could have said, these people don't love me. But he loved them still. And sometimes that love means setting boundaries. Sometimes that love means discipline. Get thee behind me, Satan. You have to love others. Sometimes that means you can't enable them and their behaviors. Love others as Jesus loved us. So, we've got our marching orders. Our job is to love others as Christ loved us. And what are the implications of this? Here are three quick takeaways. That means each day, each day, you have to decide that you are going to be a person of love. 
It's not what others are going to say to you or do to you or how others respond to you. Each day you have to make that determination. I have to make that determination that I'm going to bear with others, put up with their quirks, forgive others as the Lord has forgiven me. Each day we must clothe ourselves with love. That means exercising patience, controlling our anger, our jealousies, letting go of grudges against others and being prepared to bear all things. Each day, it means seeking the well-being of others. By this, he says, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. And the second thing this implies is that if we stay outside of this exchange of love, loving others as Christ loved us, what we're essentially saying is we don't love God. When we fail to love others as Christ loved us, what we are saying is that we don't love God. Because Jesus said this, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And anyone that loveth not, loveth not God, for God is love. That's what John tells us. And when we refuse to love as Christ loved us, when we decide not to forgive and when we hold grudges, what we are essentially saying is that what God has made is profane. That's the story and the lesson he had to teach Peter in the Acts of the Apostles reading today. That nothing God makes is profane. And that requires you and I to search and to seek the best in each other. That doesn't happen automatically. Sometimes you have to search hard and long. But it requires us to do that. And then thirdly, dear friends, it reminds us that we have a very important task ahead of us. We are representing the love of Christ. He is calling us to lead by example. And so we go forth with the courage and the devotion of St. George, our patron saint, whom we celebrate today. Like George, it's not about articulating our faith, but living our faith. What does that mean? Here's how Paul puts it. If I speak in tongues of men and angels but do not have love, I am a noisy gong and a clanging cymbal. St. Francis of Assisi put it this way. He said, proclaim the gospel and use words if necessary. So I invite you this week to think of all the ways in which you can show the love, the love of Christ to those around you. And let's also ask for forgiveness for ways in which we have withheld that love. When we show love the way Christ loved us, people will notice. They will want that love. That was the experience of one of the great monks who saw others being visited in prison every day. Every day, Tertullian, the theologian. And when he saw how the Christians responded to one of their fellow brothers who was imprisoned, he turned to the other atheists and said, see those Christians, how they love one another. That's what moves the world. When we love others the way Christ loved us. It's not what we say. It's not what comes from this pulpit. It's not what comes from our mouth often. It is our action. You know, I know that when I'm at the gym, some fellas wonder what kind of steroids I'm on when I'm bouncing around. But there's a song that I play repeatedly. It's a very reggae song. You know, it says, actions speak louder than words. And I have to remember that. Actions speak louder than words. So if we talk about loving Christ, loving others as Christ loved us, keep that in mind. What are your actions saying? And I asked the congregation this this morning, if I were to ask your children or your family members if you looked like Jesus in action, what do you think they might say? Just think about it. I asked the children not to say anything because I didn't want them to get in problems. <laughs> but think about it. If others can't say that about us, then we need to check ourselves. Jesus gives us the basic of Christianity. It is about love. And so if this sermon, if this worship experience is not moving you, then maybe we have to ask ourselves, is the love that is larger than our heart 
consumed us yet. Perhaps not. Perhaps we have not truly become children of God. Because to be a child of God, we love others as Christ loved us. That's our challenge. That's our everyday task. But that more of us then continue to love the way Christ loved. Amen.